Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome a very senior and accomplished professional from Cleveland, Ohio, Janine Jennings. Janine, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you. Uh, Janine is the president of JP Tax Service and Accounting, and she has a very interesting mission. Her mission is to provide comprehensive solutions to cosmetology professionals who often struggle with handling their taxes, managing their credit, maintaining sufficient funds, and planning for retirement. So Janine, before we start talking about uh, accounting, help me understand your own background and what got you interested in the cosmetology industry? Well, ever since first grade, I I don't know, I developed this want to be, become a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. I knew since first grade I was going to be a hairstylist. I don't know how I knew, mm -hmm. but I did know. Wow. And ever since first grade, I, I loved just playing in people's hair. I loved making, you know, people feel good about that after the outcome, after I've done their hair. Mm -hmm. And it just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And so I pursued that after high school, after I graduated, I pursued my cosmetology degree. Mm -hmm. so, and then uh, after cosmetology, what got you interested in the taxing and taxes and accounting? Okay, well, just being a young entrepreneur, I had the artistic parts down packed, mm -hmm. but it, the housekeeping is what I call it, the back end of knowing how to figure out how much profit you're making, mm -hmm. knowing how to save, um, just that's not what they teach you in the cosmetology field. They mm -hmm. they teach you more of the styling, the trends, the coloring and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so um, a client happened to ask me, she said, well, are you saving for retirement? And mm -hmm. I just never thought about that mm -hmm. early on in my career. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I could as an entrepreneur. I didn't know. So I started doing research and then um, I'm like, you know what? I should probably get a degree mm -hmm. uh, in accounting uh, so I can know how to at least do my own accounting. Right. And so uh, my friends who, were, are, who are also cosmetologists at tax time, they didn't know what to do or, you know, anything about taxes. They knew everything about hair, nothing about taxes. And mm -hmm. so I was able to help them understand what to do and and break it down in, in childlike terms so they can understand how to save money and, and make a profit and keep more money in their pocket. Mm, fascinating. And based on all the work that you've done, with so many cosmetology professionals, what are some of the common financial challenges they face? The common financial challenges they face are not knowing if they made a profit. Okay. Not knowing how to calculate a profit margin. You know, they know what they want to charge, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean they've made a profit after they've given their service. And then also saving for retirement mm -hmm. is another challenge. They don't know where to start, how much to save, or, you know, they just are depending on a social security and that's not, that's not going to mm -hmm. help you when you retire. That's not going to be enough money. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And why do you think, uh, you know, that in most professions now, People are becoming aware of financial literacy. Why do you think financial literacy is often overlooked in the cosmetology profession? It is overlooked because you're dealing with a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. And pers my personal opinion is, is because it's not what sells. Mm -hmm. you know? It's not real interesting when you're talking to a cosmetology professional. They're not really interested in that. They want the art, artistic part. They don't want the math, mathematical part. Mm. You know? So they just don't teach it. Mm. 
which is which is sad to me in my opinion yeah and what again in your opinion as uh, some of the simple but effective ways to track expenses and manage funds that's a great question simple and practical ways to track funds are one download mint.com mm -hmm. and what this does is gives you a, a full picture of your financial um, outlook. It gives you your net worth. It gives you, it tracks your spend expenses and it puts it in categories for you. Mm -hmm. It tells you when you're spending too much and um, in, in certain categories. Mm -hmm. And once you get a full picture with everything in it, and you're looking at it, you're able to then make very calculated, informed decisions about what you should do next. Mm. And then also um, mint.com and also downloading, it's, it's not like a financial planner, but it is Google Calendar. Putting all of your events in there and scheduling out your your day helps you to also make calculated decisions about what you should do, mm -hmm. um, when you should do it, and if you have time to do anything that you need to do, because it, it, it helps you become more disciplined mm -hmm. because time isn't money. That's what a lot of people uh, like to say, time is money, but time isn't money because Money can be made over and over again. Mm -hmm. Time, you can't make that over and over again. Once you lose it, it's gone. It's, it's not made up. Well said. And uh, my next question is, you know, um, in the U.S. particularly and most places around the world, credit history is very important. Yes. And credit history can only be built over a period of time. What are some tips on how a lot of the people in the cosmetology industry can repair their own credit? First tip would be to call the credit bureaus and confirm your information, mm -hmm. meaning confirm your name, your address, your social, where you work at. Mm -hmm. and once you do that confirmation, it cleans up all of the extra stuff that's on your credit and it takes it away. And then that helps you to then in turn gain between 50 and 80 points by cleaning up all of that or taking off all that old stuff that doesn't that doesn't belong to you. Because sometimes um, your credit report has stuff on it from 10 years ago that isn't even relevant. Hmm. So that's one way. Right. Second way is to first get your um free credit report and you can get that you can call the credit bureaus and get it yourself and and ask them to send it to you mm -hmm. or you can go online to uh, free annual credit mm -hmm. and they uh, you can you'll you'll get a online or a pdf of your um, credit report instantly and then you can see what's on there and then you can dispute what does is not correct mm -hmm. because Certain things are on your credit report that aren't correct that you may have paid and um, the credit bureau didn't take it off. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, on my website, jptaxservice.com, I have free credit dispute letters. You can just download it and dispute your credit, uh, dispute things off of your credit mm -hmm. uh, using those letters. Mm -hmm. Well said. So one part is, uh, Janine, the, the credit rating, but the other part, which is very critical for small and medium enterprises, is tax management. What are, in your view, some of the effective strategies to manage tax? Some of the effective uh, strategies that to manage taxes are, one, keeping all of your receipts. Mm -hmm. Receipts save your life. That is my motto. Mm -hmm. Keep every little receipt because that proves that you actually spent the money on an item. That's one. Two, you can use either QuickBooks 
or zero, and that's called and uh, that's spelled X E R O. And those are accounting softwares that are very reasonable on the pocket. Mm -hmm. And they help you categorize the expenses that um, of, of the things that you're spending your money on. Mm -hmm. And that way, when you know what you're spending your money on, you know how to either cut back or scale up. So okay. those, are the, those mm -hmm. are the two major ones. Fascinating. My other question is that, how important is diversification of services, um, you know, within the cosmetology industry for planning one's finances? Starting out for new cosmetologists that haven't, um, that don't have anything in place. Mm -hmm. My opinion, it diversification isn't as um, necessary. You just need to start meaning start with simple retirement um, platforms like Acorns or mm -hmm. Griffin to get in the habit of putting money away. Mm -hmm. And once you master that after about, I would say six to 12 months, then you start to divers divers um, diversify. <laughs> Said that right, diversify, yeah, yeah. diversify, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and you know, you told us about a couple of uh, um, apps that you could download for uh, managing you know, credit. Do you also want to recommend some tools to manage business finances? Yes, the the tools that um, I recommend to manage business finances are QuickBooks and Xero. Mm -hmm. Those help you understand your financial picture. Mm -hmm. okay. Also mint.com that helps you also understand your financial footprint. Mm -hmm. Those, once you plug in everything, all of your bills, your car loans, your house notes, your if you have rental property, uh, your bank accounts, once you plug all of that in in mint.com, you're able to see your financial footprint and know how much money you can start putting away for retirement or for acquiring another building in your business or what have you, maybe getting another vehicle for the business to do mobile services. Mm -hmm. So interesting so let's talk a little bit more about retirement because that's how when we started our conversation we did speak about the challenges people face about not planning for retirement yes Janine what are some retirement options that are particularly well suited to people in the cosmetology industry some retirement op options that are for cosmetology cosmetologists and people in the cosmetology industry are acorns mm -hmm. where it will let you save as little as $5 a week to start out and putting into a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. It it helps you also um, put away money for a Roth IRA. They added that feature a few years ago where you can open up a Roth IRA in acorns and you can start putting money into your Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. And that a Roth IRA is what I recommend um, for people in the cosmetology field. Because at 59 and a half, you get to take that money out tax-free mm -hmm. withdrawals. Okay. Yes. And then also Griffin is another app where it's investing your at least a dollar into different stocks. Mm -hmm. And you can start to build up a cash reserve, investing as little as 59 cents, a dollar, $2 in stocks. And it goes off of your transactions in your bank account. Mm -hmm. So if you bought something from Family Dollar, it invests a portion of that amount that you spent at Family Dollar into mm -hmm. a Family Dollar stock. Mm -hmm. So, Fascinating. Yes. Fascinating. 
And what would you say are some of the first steps someone uh, should take to plan retirement? And one very interesting one you told me was $5 a day where you could save. So what are some of the other steps people could take? Other steps that people can take are to open up a brokerage account at Vanguard where um, they can invest in the S&P 500. If they start out at as little as between $200 and $1,000 a month and start investing that in the S&P 500, they will see their money grow tremendously because that has a good track record of um, returns of between eight to 10% and they can start building their retirement and living a full life when they do plan to retire. Mm -hmm. And then also treasury bonds, mm -hmm. investing in treasury bonds that has a nice percentage rate, uh, interest rate on your money, a, a good ROI on your money don't quote me on the percentage, mm -hmm. five to eight percent, and just start investing between 200 or as much as 1500 a month into that, mm -hmm. and you will see a great return on your money. Mm -hmm. Um, also, they need they need to look at um ssa.gov. And you need to know how much you're getting at the end of when you do plan to retire. Mm -hmm. Because that's important. You don't know how much Social Security you're going to draw. Yeah. Um, and you need to um, understand if you need to add to your so pay into your Social Security. Mm -hmm. Because when it's time to retire and or time to, for you to withdraw your mm -hmm. Social Security, you, you want to have a nice chunk of change. Mm, well said. So time for two more questions for you. Uh, can you share a, a success story of a client you've helped achieve financial stability? Yes. Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. One of my um, friends and co old co-workers came to me. She didn't know, she started to understand, you know, literacy when I, I started helping her with her taxes. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, I need to save for retirement and I don't know what to do, where to start. So I created an action plan for her. And first I did the steps that I mentioned mm -hmm. in, in earlier. I had her download an Acorns account I had her start out with $10 a week mm -hmm. investing. I had her open up her Roth IRA. I had her investing $20 a month in that. And then I went on ssa.gov so she can see how much she er, is going to retire with. Mm -hmm. um, and then also I had her do her survival number, mm -hmm. meaning Pick a date of when you're going to retire. Doesn't mean a uh, pick an age when you're going to retire. Doesn't mean you have to retire that date mm. at that age, but at least you know a, a ending date of when you're going to retire. Then mm. we worked backwards, like, okay, well, how much do you feel you're going to need in retirement? And so we did. We calculated her survival number, which is free for you to uh, calculate on my website jptaxservice.com it's in it's under resources you can calculate your survival number so you know how much you need mm -hmm. when you do retire mm -hmm. then um we calculate her survival number and then we just made a plan of how much she's supposed to put away per month to go towards her retirement mm -hmm. and so after about 12 months she came to me and just gave me the biggest hug Mm -hmm. And she was like, I really, really appreciate you sitting down with me, helping me understand the importance of putting money away and not just always spending, spending, you know, um, society wants us to consume, consume mm -hmm. and consume, but you don't, you can't consume everything. You need to put stuff away for later on in life. And she saw the fruits of her labor just by starting out with $10 and $20, how mm 
how much has grown and she just feels better and comfortable about herself. Okay, so. Fabulous. Thank you for sharing such an amazing story. And my last question to you, Janine, and this is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation. And this question to you is to you as an entrepreneur. What would you say are three lessons you have learned that you would like to share with a lot of young professionals who want to become entrepreneurs um, based on your own learnings? Three lessons that I've learned. <clears throat> um, I would say, I don't know why this came to mind, but I would mm -hmm. say you miss 100% of the shots you do not take. Mm -hmm. So I would say just start. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have it all figured out mm -hmm. of uh, knowing what to do. There are people who know what to do. So seek those people out who are doing somewhat what you're wanting to do mm -hmm. and ask them for help or ask them for guidance. Most entrepreneurs are here, are willing to give you some knowledge. You don't have to make every mistake that <laughs> um, that you're going to make in, mm. in business. You can ask somebody so you can avoid certain mistakes. Mm. Every, every mistake doesn't have to be made. Mm. Um, and another lesson is if you make a mistake, it's correctable most of the times. Mm. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay to make some mistakes because um, that's how you learn. I call it on the job training. Mm -hmm. Well said. And on that note, Janine, and your three wonderful lessons. I love the first one you says, you know, you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you do not take. So just make a beginning, just start. Second, you said was seek help and guidance. And third, you said was mistakes are okay. Um, thank you so much for speaking to me about your journey. Thank you for speaking to me about all the work that you are doing for the cosmetology professionals in the U.S., and thank you also for raising and discussing some amazing thoughts about retirement of people in the small and medium enterprises, because I'm sure all of these apply to everyone who's a small entrepreneur. Yes. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.